The absolute pride and joy of my garden is my native fish pond. But recently, something really strange happened. It was full of weird, worm-like things swimming around. And for the life of me, I couldn't figure out what they were and if they were harming my fish. It's not something I'd ever encountered before, but I had an idea. I took a water sample from my pond and I headed to the University of Nottingham, which has a few microscopes and lecturer Tom Hartman, who is an expert in little wiggly things. The idea was to get a better look and to try and work out what on earth these things were. Tom got them under the microscope and straight away he knew what they were. Oh no, they're definitely right. These are definitely spirostomum, which are a single celled ciliate. They're gorgeous. Oh, okay, so are they a problem? No. No, okay. So it turns out these aren't worms and they aren't algae. They're much more primitive and they're one of the largest single celled organisms. So big, in fact, you can see them with the naked eye. Now, as Tom mentioned, they aren't an issue in of themselves, but why are there so many? Well, looking in this very handy book, it has a clue. They thrive in low oxygen, and this led me to my next step. I borrowed an oxygen detector and placed it in my pond, which for a healthy fish pond should be around 80% for dissolved oxygen, but even 50% is acceptable for most fish. However, my pond was at 34%, which is much lower than I'd like it to be. It was time to take some action and get some more oxygen into the pond. I'll get this out of the way now, as I know I'll get bombarded in the comments, which is why don't you have a filter? I like the natural look of having lots of plants in the pond, which can clog up filters, but put simply, I didn't want one. With the low stocking density of fish, I didn't need one either. I should add that none of my fish have died, and currently the only fish in the pond are crucians and tench, which are about the hardiest fish going for low oxygen. If I had species like barbel or trout in the pond, they would have most likely died by now, so I would recommend a pump and filter for them. I keep getting asked by people to do an update on my pond fish. So essentially, I don't tend to keep the same fish for prolonged periods, but rather rotate them around. So the other coarse fish that were in this pond have been rehoused to a friend's larger pond. The reason for this is I've got limited space and I like to keep lots of different species. And rather than overcrowding the pond, I just swap fish out when I want to try something new. I've got enough friends in the hobby that there's always someone who's willing to take some fish off me. To add oxygen to the pond, I had a three step plan. The first was to do a slight water change. And with this being a raised pond, it's an easy process of just putting in a siphon and letting out around 25% of the water out of the pond. I stirred up the pond to help remove fine sediment and then got to what I believe is the main issue, which is excess silt. There was a thick bed of silt on the bottom, which will be releasing gases, bacteria, and making the water murky. So using a net, I scooped out as much silt as possible. This is great compost, so I recommend using it on your plants in the garden, so not to waste it. I'd suggest removing as many fish as possible before you start desilting to avoid stress to the fish. As you can imagine, there was a lot of silt at the bottom of the pond. Silt is caused by rotting leaves, plants, and anything else that falls into the pond. Trimming vegetation around the pond helps keep it down, and a mesh net in the autumn would help stop most of the leaves going into the pond. I've had this pond for around four years, so this isn't something you need to do every year, and if you have a pump and filter, this wouldn't be nearly as big an issue. I replenished the 25% of the water I took out, and I also add an air pump, which is set to pump oxygen into the pond every 15 seconds, and a water fountain, which is solar powered. But setting this up in winter may have not been the best idea. When the sun came out, it did eventually work. I'll be honest, I think the desilting is the main thing to do, but it certainly doesn't hurt to have some air pumping and water moving. And the beauty of these is that I can remove them quickly 
if I want to go back to a more natural look. I think in the summer they'll be really useful when oxygen levels can drop very quickly. They're both from Blagden, so if you'd like to get hold of them, do check out the link in the description where you can buy them from. I left the pond for a couple of days and then did another reading with the dissolved oxygen meter, now sitting at around 80%, which is perfect and a big improvement. The water clarity is much better also, and I put all the crucians and tench back into the pond. So if your pond ends up with lots of wriggly little things in it, it could be a case that you've got low oxygen. Check if there's lots of silt in there, it may need removing, and if that fails, try a water change and adding oxygen and some water movement will improve your pond as well. I've also got a range of merch out at the moment, including a 2025 fish calendar, playing cards, and an A2 poster, which you can buy from my website with a link in the description. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed this vid, why not check out this other video right here? If you can, please subscribe to the channel, it only takes a couple of seconds and it really helps me out. I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.